welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. That's right, Tim F. I am Gary Vaynerchuk. Thank you for the intro. I hope to see you again. If anybody wants to see Tim's entire spoof, it's right over here. And you may notice right next to it is another link for Dig. Dig, one of our favorite websites, D-I-double-G, baby, is really a cool site for tech things and they've launched a little thing for favorite podcasts. It's like a competition, competitiveness, you know, things I like. And please, and this is the one thing I beg of you of your of this episode actually, is to click that and give us some love. We wanna move up the ranks. Right now we look like the lowly uh, Vikings. you know. So we need some love. Please click that. Get everybody you know to click it. It's a popularity contest and I hate not being popular. Lurkers. Question of the day just for you. What do I need to do to get you out? I'm comparing stats to comments and I just feel horrible. Lurkers, your question of the day is, what do I need to do to get you to come out? Another thing, a lot of people personally emailing me and saying, hey Gary, do a show on this, did it. Do a show on that, did it. Do a show on this, did it. So, clearly our web design is not strong, so I'm gonna have to do this. Look up here, there's a search bar. Search in there and you'll find lots of cool episodes, search anything you want. Hopefully you'll find the episode you're looking for because you know, 6,000 emails is just not enough a day. Finally, the forums. There is an obscene amount of content in there. Lots of great chatter, a lot to learn, things that I can learn. So if you haven't joined the forum, please do so. Go up there in the top left corner and join the forum. Uh, Videos, looking for videos, still looking for um, t-shirt contest, and obviously the Oak Monster is doing really well. I got about 10 or 11 today. People are doing a great job. Huge montage this Friday, so submit your Oak Monster original content. Movies, pictures, videos, songs. Please do that, and don't forget, once again, the Vaniac contest, the Vaniac t-shirt contest, right up here, all you new watchers. I'm taking somebody, and that's right, I didn't mention this, but you get to bring a guest too. So two people, I'm bringing two people to California with me for a three-day weekend for VIP eating, tasting, and if you want to go to a San Francisco Giants game and Boo Barry Bonds, I'll be there with you. 150th episode, all I can say is thank you. Thank you to all the Vaniacs, especially the original crew. You guys know who you are. This show has really taken off. We're just having a lot, a lot of fun. And so today, I'm tasting three wines from the old world that, as a celebration, None of these wines are available at Wine Library, they once were. These are, all three of these wines retail between $175 and $250 a bottle. And what we have today are three first growth Bordeaux. That's right, we have three first growth Bordeaux and we're gonna taste through. And we did the move today and I felt like I had to bring the move back out because I know a lot of people missed it. The move is this. A lot of people want to know how to go to a restaurant with a great bottle of wine, but you're going to just pop it open there and it's not going to be able to breathe or decant. So what you do is you decant the wine hours and hours before you go, you grab a trusty little filter, you put it into the bottle, and you pour the decanting back in, you put the cork in, you put the bottle in your trunks in case you get pulled over, and you take it to the restaurant. I don't condone any state laws that are broken by that maneuver. But what I'm telling you is that this can do it this can do the absolute trick and that's what we did today. I actually poured a lot of it back into the bottles because I like to pour out of the bottle when we do the show. The wines have been opened and decanting for four hours. That's why it's a little bit later today. We wanted to really give these 99, and they're all 1999, first growths, the perfect opportunity to shine. And here we go, and this is really great. I want to thank you for allowing me to taste great wine. Um, and don't be jealous, come on. You know, we, uh, we, we don't do that in Vayner Nation. 1999. Chateau Haut Brion, 91 points, Wine Spectator, 93 points, Robert Parker, and this is a uh, classic winery. I mean, Chateau Haut Brion, I don't have to tell you, is one of the great wines in the world. Now, this is 80% Merlot, let me just uh, wrote them, 30% Cabernet and 10% Cab Franc. So it's mainly a Merlot based wine in this vintage. Um, and uh, let's see what's going on here. Really nice color. You know, not too over the top dark, just a nice ruby red color. Hoprion is obviously uh, just a magical place. Uh, if you have ever been to Bordeaux, you've got to visit. 99 was a very interesting vintage, underrated by a lot of wine geeks. God, I gotta stop this. Um, but 
It's a very strong vintage, in my opinion, in a lot of ways. Again, 93 Parker, 91 Spectator. Let's give it a whirl. I'm getting a lot of dill, uh, black pepper, um, green pepper, a uh, little bit of dirt, a couple lizard backs, and one or two uh, worm heads. No doubt about it, old world in the house, representing on this nose. A little bit of cherry underlining, but very light, very severe, heavy, earthy tones. Um, terroir, oh man, driven flavors. A very young wine still. I mean, huge tannin structure. Um, I'm getting a little bit of cassis coming through. A um, little blackberry. Really obvious flavors of tobacco. Leather. We're back in right field with our baseball mitt when we were seven on this wine. Very dry. A little wet rock in the mix as well. Very, very earthy, but very tight. Tightly wound, this is a baby. Look for this wine to really not start opening up for another 15 years. Um, I'm gonna score this wine 89 points. I'm really not blown away by it in any shape or form, but that's for this moment. There's clearly a lot behind this wine. I think this wine's an easy 92, 93 pointer over time. Um, but at this moment, you know, I find it tightly wound, a little bit disjointed. being a little harsh. This is a 90 pointer for sure, 90 plus. You know, I feel like being tough today. I'm starting to get mentally prepared for the dirty fish on Christmas night. Huge game, huge. Um, very dry, you can put this away for a long time. If you've got this in your cellar, don't even consider opening it up. Let's move on. Chateau Margot, 1999. 92 points Wine Spectator, 94 points Robert Parker, 75% Cab, 17 Merlot, 5 Petit Verdot, 3 Cab Franc, and uh, and I'm excited about that. Eric's shaking his head, not coming through clear to label there. Sorry, folks. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Nice color, better than the Hoprion. A little bit darker, a little bit richer, a little bit more enticing, saying, come on. A little bit better than that HB. All right, let's taste this wine. Much more aromatic on the nose, much, much more. Wow, really opened up. You smelled it? I mean, Eric's shaking his head, so it's clearly coating the entire room. Very big. I'm getting um, some cherry, some uh, cassis, little red cassis. I'm getting very heavy doses of leather. Asian spice. Little underlining flavors of curry, believe it or not, as well, on the nose. Very earthy as well, though. And even a little hint on the undertone as I finish, as I came off there, of mint coming through on, which is quite nice, actually. Let's give this a whirl. This is a monster. I love it. Silky, silky as silk in the mid palate. I mean, just really, really smooth. Luscious, black currant, cherry, little hint of strawberry, but other chocolate and mocha, a lot of caramel as well. Hints of butterscotch even on the finish that I'm tasting now. Mixed in lovely and integrated perfectly with a little bit of the vegetal asparagus broccoli that I love. This is a perfect food wine. Perfect, picture perfect with a great steak, anything complex, lots of pepper, game, anything like that, rabbit, hen, I mean, sweetbreads, uh, pate, foie gras, this can go with everything. This is just a polished bottle of wine. I'm really enthusiastic about this effort. I'm really impressed, actually. I mean, to me, you can see a big swallow there. This is perfect 
old world wine. Really luscious. This still has enough tannin backbone to go for 15, 20 years easy as well, but it is opened up like a beautiful flower in a field of ugliness, and it is just absolutely tremendous. Let's score this wine 96 points. This is a home run bottle of wine, and if you have this in your cellar, time to pop one because I think it's hitting a very nice stride. These wines are a little bit cooler because they're from my personal selection, so they were temperature controlled. It's just that nice temperature right now. If you have a special occasion and you've got some 99 Margot laying around, time to pop it. This is rocking its face off. Let's move on. Chateau Mouton Rothschild, 1999. 175 bucks, 93 Parker, 90 Wine Spectator, 78 Cab, 18 Merlot, and 4 Cabernet Franc. This is what it's all about, celebrating a great moment with great wine. I mean, this is a lot of fun and, and I just want to uh, give a huge shout out once again to all the Vaniacs. Please send in pictures with your t-shirts on. We're gonna do a huge collage and don't forget about the t-shirt contest so make sure that's not part of it. But it's been awesome and you know, to sit back and be, uh, Eric, 150 episodes. I mean, huge and I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm still not faded in any sense of the world. I'm just getting started. How am I gonna top last Friday's episode? You'll see. Jumping out of planes and rhinoceroses. That's all I'm telling you. Great color. I mean like really nice red color. This is a little bit, really reminiscent of the Margot color. Let's give this a whirl and a sniff. And I smell berries, lots of them. Actually a much more New World smell than the last two. Um, got a lot of candied Skittles on the nose, which is really nice. I'm sure Mouton will be thrilled to hear that. Very black licorice available as well in this nose. This is very candy, very lively. Like a party going on in there with Lionel Richie, you know? Just like a lot of fun in there. I like it though, it's very nice. So again, a little mint here too, which is quite interesting. The mint is coming out today. It's a little disrespectful, sorry bud. Um, Really good weight on this wine. Very nice and full body. Between the mid palate and the finish, there's a little dryness and a little bitterness that could throw off a lot of people. It's a little young, a little bit younger than uh, drinking right now than the uh, Margot. This wine also has 25 to 35 year potential on it. It's drinking extremely nice now. Great weight. I'm getting a lot. I mean, a whole heck of a lot of like. Jamaican blue coffee flavors on, on the mid palate. Um, lots of chocolate as well. Um, I like this wine. It's very, very good. Again, food wines. All of these are great food wines. Um, just give us one last taste. Now I'm just cheating and enjoying myself. Sorry about that. Definitely a little bit more New World than the Margot. Very, very good. Well structured, great complexity, nice and silky, great mouthfeel on the Mouton, even better than the Margot actually. Um, I'm gonna score this wine 94 plus. It's a profound effort, it's very, very good. Uh, I'm a big fan of the way the 99s are developing. Hopefully you have some in your cellar. If not, don't cry. Um, everybody you care about is healthy and most importantly, that's what it's all about. Um, so you don't have any 99s in your cellar. Great wines, great friends, and uh, I don't know, uh, just really loving this. Let's keep it going, and you know what? Watch this. You, and a, just a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit of me, we're changing the wine world.